gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Los Angeles, California. I work here. I'm a cop. It was Monday, June 8th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Norman. My name's Friday. A young girl had been shot with a 22 caliber rifle. It was reported as suicide. We had to check it out. Say. Well, according to this, business office got a call at 2.30 this morning. Landlady out in the Westlake Park District called and said that this young girl had committed suicide. They got an ID on her? No, they got her listed as a Jane Doe, number 17. There's a description here. Better check it with missing person. Yeah. How'd the landlady happen to find the body? Well, according to this report here, she heard the water running in the apartment. She finally went up to see what it was. When she didn't get an answer to the knock, she opened the door and went in and found the body. Well, the girl didn't live in the apartment then, huh? No, the place is rented to a Ross Mitchell. Anything on him? No, the report says he wasn't home. He was checked through R&I. No make on him. How about prints on the victim? No go. I checked him out. Nothing on her here. We can send him on to Washington, though. Yeah. Found a suicide note. There's a transcript of it here. What's it say? Ross, I've tried to make you understand. Nothing seems to do any good. I've told you that I won't stand in the way of your career. But you don't want to try to make a go of it. I know this doesn't solve anything, but it's the only way I can think of. Any signature? No. The report says the original copy's over at the crime lab for processing. Mm-hmm. They're gonna send it on to Meyer, then? Yeah, I talked to Gorey and Barkley. They rolled on the call. Uh-huh. I said that there's something that doesn't ring for them. They say what it was? No, just that it didn't look right. Well, I guess we better start with the landlady. Yeah, that's the best lead we got. Glendo and Bates are out there now. The place was staked right away. Friday, you want to take it on, too? Yeah, thanks. Homicide, Friday. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We just got it. Yeah. Okay, Max, have him wait there, will you? Yeah. No, we'll be right over. Right. Oh, we got a break. That's Max Kuntz over at the coroner's office. He's got an ID on the girl. Yeah. Her father's there now. <laughs> At 8.14 a.m., we left the city hall and went over to the coroner's office in the Hall of Justice. We met the victim's father, a Mr. Robert Paul. He told us there could be no mistake. The body was that of his daughter, Molly. The attendant had given him some smelling salts, and after introducing us, he left to close off the viewing room. I don't know why she'd do it. None of it makes sense. When did you see your daughter last, Mr. Paul? Saturday afternoon. It was the last time I never saw her again. She was gone Saturday night and all day yesterday. Yeah. Did you hear from her at all? No. Weren't you worried about her? No. Sometimes she doesn't come home, stays with a girlfriend. But when we didn't hear from her by last night, I got worried and started calling her out. Did she say where she was going when she left? No, she told me she was going over to see Peggy. So the two of them are going to a show. She'd be home for dinner, sure. Who's this Peggy? Peggy Wallace, friend of Molly's. Have you talked to her? Hmm? I see. have you talked to this Peggy Wallace since your daughter disappeared? Oh, yes. No, I, I called her last night, I talked to her then. I was almost out of my mind. I didn't know what to do. I told you her last night. She didn't know. Do you know if your daughter knows anybody named Ross Mitchell? Ross. Ross Mitchell. No, I don't think I've ever heard the name. Why do you ask? Just wondered. Do you know something about this you're not telling me? Is that it? No, sir. Well, it must be something like that. You don't just come up with a name like that out of thin air. You gotta have a reason. Well, I'm her father. I, I got a right to know. All night, I'm sitting there waiting for the phone to ring. All right, Mr. Paul, take it easy. I'm sorry. Have you got a cigarette? Yes, sir. Here you are. There's a match. I'm, I'm sorry about that. It's all right, sir. We understand. Can you give us an address where we can talk to this Peggy Wallace? Yes. She works at a restaurant over on 7th. I've got her home address, too, if you want to. Well, did your daughter have any steady boyfriends that you knew of? No, oh, I... I don't think so. No one that she went with steady. Was there one man she liked more than the others? I think there was. I, I don't know who. Her mother asked her about it a couple of times. Wanted to know who the fellow was. Molly never say. Just said that it wasn't serious and it didn't matter. Did your daughter have a job? Not regular. She used to model once in a while. And maybe she'd pick up a day's work in pictures. Not much. I see. Now, can you think of any reason why she'd want to take her own life? No. 
She seemed pretty happy, never gave any indication that anything was wrong. Has well, she been ill lately, would you know, under a doctor's care? No, not that I know about. Possible she might have been seeing a doctor and you wouldn't know it? No, her mother would know and she'd have told me. I'm pretty sure she was feeling all right. Anything about her job, maybe? Anything that bothered her? What do you mean? Well, was she happy with what she was doing? Did she feel like she was doing what she wanted to do? Oh, yeah. Molly didn't want a career. She was looking for a husband, wanted to settle down and raise a family. Mm -hmm. Well, can you think of anything at all that might make her want to take her own life? No. I can't understand it. None of it makes sense to me. Where she was found, she didn't know anybody in that part of town. I don't know what she'd be doing over there. Did she drink? I don't think I understand. Well, I mean, did she drink much, sir? At bars, cocktail lounges, anything like that? Oh, no. No, she didn't. Molly was a good girl. She didn't drink or smoke. She was a good girl. Just a home and family, that's all she wanted. Nothing more. I don't know why you're asking me all these questions. I'm her father. You're the police. It's up to you to find the reasons. That's your job not to come around and say things about my girl. Well, we're sorry. We didn't mean to offend you, Mr. Paul. I'm sorry, too. Sergeant, may I ask you a question? Yes, sir. Are you just going to write this off as a suicide? We don't know. Do you men really think my daughter killed herself? We don't know, sir, but we're going to find out. We continued to talk to the father of the victim. From him, we got a list of the girl's friends, the addresses, and the names of the people she worked for. While we were talking to him, he was unable to give us any idea as to why Molly Paul might want to take her own life. He insisted that he didn't know any one of his daughter's acquaintances named Ross Mitchell. Mr. Paul recovered from the initial shock and went home. 8.40 a.m., we called the girl's mother, Mrs. Paul. She corroborated her husband's story and told us that she didn't know a Ross Mitchell. 8.43 a.m., we checked with the crime lab to see if they'd been able to come up with anything in the dead girl's effects to help us. Lieutenant Lee Jones at the lab told us that they hadn't finished their investigation yet. 8.50 a.m., we drove over to the rooming house where Molly Paul had been found and we talked with the landlady, Thelma Keene. It's terrible, the poor little thing. Yes, ma'am. You haven't seen Ross Mitchell yet? No, he hasn't come in yet. I told the officers last night that I didn't expect him until noon today. Have you seen the girl before? Once in a while. She'd come in with Ross, wait for him, and then go right out. Did you see her last night? I told the officers that were here last night that I didn't. Didn't you talk to them at all? Well, we have the report they filed, Miss Keene, but we'd like to get some facts from you if we could. Well, it seems like a waste of time, but I suppose you have to. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any idea when Miss Paul might have come in? No, not the slightest. When was the last time you saw Mitchell? Saturday around noon, he came in and told me that he'd be out of town over the weekend. Said for me to keep an eye on the place. Did he tell you where he was going? He said he was going to visit an assistant director friend of his over at La Canada. Did he say what this friend's name was? No, they're working on a picture together. Ross just met him the other day, asked him out for the weekend. Ross is very good at making friends. Mm -hmm. Do you know where he's working? No, Ross said it was a sea adventure, doing it in full color 3D. Guess it's going to be quite a spectacle. Didn't have all the gimmicks in my day. Ma'am. We didn't have 3D or the other things. In my day, we acted. We knew how to act from the heart. That's me. Henry Montaigne said I played the greatest maid ever. It was a big part. These youngsters, a good flack can make a star out of anybody. Things have changed. Here, this was made over on Catalina Island. We were shooting a jungle picture. We acted. No doubles for us. Real actors. Well, when was that, man? A few years ago. Why are you asking all these questions about Ross? Well, the note the girl left was addressed to him. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Just some lovesick girl. That doesn't mean Ross had anything to do with it. Well, we have to be sure, Miss King. Well, you just believe me. I know the boy. He wouldn't get mixed up in a thing like this. Just some lovesick autograph hunter. Same thing used to happen to me all the time. All right. Sure, I used to get a couple hundred letters a week from men asking me to marry them. Said if I didn't, they just couldn't go on. Well, they did, though, but I guess it made them feel better. That's all it was, though, adolescence. How long has Ross lived here, ma'am? Since he came to California. How long has that been? Oh, I guess it's been about three and a half years. Came out here from the Midwest, wanted to be an actor, moved out, and started pounding on doors. He's done pretty well. He'll do better. He's going to be a big star someday. Handle him right, and he'll be a big man. Yes, ma'am. Has this girl ever come to see anybody else here in the building? No, not that I know of. Never saw her. Mm -hmm. How'd you happen to find the body? Would you tell us? I went to bed about 10.30. They were running one of my old movies on TV, and I stayed up to see it. Did you happen to catch it? It was called The Floods Will Come. It was made over on Catalina. It starred Nick Benton, real movie idol. Here's one of the stills from the picture. Here's the whole company. And that's me. And that's Nick with the puttees. He put on a little weight. <laughs> I remember he had to do road work while we were there to trim down. He held the company up for a week. It was a grand picture. They didn't do it right on television. It looked a little corny. I guess the way they run it through the machines, you know, we all look pasty, even Nick. Yes, ma'am. Would you go on, please? 
Well, after I saw the picture, I went out to the kitchen, got a bowl of shredded wheat peat in bed, and came back to the bedroom, and I heard this noise. What noise was that, ma'am? Well, like somebody running water in one of the taps. It went on and on, and pretty soon it started to bother me. I couldn't understand it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Finally, I went up to see who it was, and the noise came from Ross's apartment. I knocked, but there wasn't any answer, so I unlocked the door and went in. I thought something was wrong. That's when I saw her. Yes, ma'am. She was lying on the bed, and right away I called the police. Now, before you went up, did you hear any other noises? Any sound of a struggle, anything like that? No, just the running water. How about the shot? Did you hear that? No, no, I didn't. There was a lot of shooting in the picture I was watching. Did you touch anything in the room? No, I turned on the lights, but that's all. The room was dark when I went in, just turned on the lights, and then I called the police. I see. Now, according to the report, there wasn't any purse found with the body. Did you see one when you went in? I didn't. If I had, you'd have gotten it. What are you trying to say, that I stole her purse? Is that what you're trying to say? No, ma'am. Well, you'd better not. I've got a reputation in this town. I know a lot of big people. I'm not going to have you come in here and call me a thief. We didn't mean to offend you, ma'am. Hmm. Well, here's a photograph that ought to interest you. This is me when I won the East Indian Award for my picture, Sunset in Rangoon. You should have seen the big fire sequence. It was printed up in dye tone, all red. Very effective. Yes, ma'am. Uh, who has a key to Mitchell's place besides him? No one. He's got the only one. I don't like a lot of keys to the rooms out. I tell all the tenants that. You got any idea how the girl might have gotten into the room? No. Do you know who the twenty-two rifle belonged to? Yes, it was Ross's. You're pretty sure about that, are you? Yes, I, I saw it when he moved in. Commented on it then. He said he'd had it since he was a kid, kept it out of sentiment. Mm-hmm. Well, what's all this about, anyway? You seem to think there's something wrong. Is that it? No, ma'am. It's just that in things like this, we have to make a complete investigation. Oh. Well, I want to do all I can to help you, but I do have an appointment with my agent, and if there's nothing more you want, I'd like to be going. All right, Miss Keene. If we want to talk to you, we'll be able to reach you here? Yes, right here. All right, we'll give you a call to tell you about the inquest. Am I going to have to be there? Yes, ma'am, you and Mitchell. Well, why him? Well, it was his apartment. But he didn't have anything to do with it. Well, maybe so, ma'am, but he'll still have to be there. Well, it's not fair. A thing like this can ruin him. By the time the papers get through with it, he'll be finished. It can ruin his career. Doesn't that mean anything? It can ruin him. It must mean something to you. Yes, ma'am. So does that dead girl. We gave our card to Thelma Keene and asked her to call us in the event she thought of anything else. We also asked her to notify us immediately in the event she heard from Mitchell. Nine fifteen a.m. We went upstairs and checked with Galindo and Bates, who were staked out in Ross Mitchell's room where the dead girl had been found. Yeah, I haven't seen him, huh, Dan? No, only those pictures on the wall. Actor, huh? Yeah, looks like he's in every one of them, huh? I don't see many of those anymore. Yeah. My wife's still crazy about him. Well, we'll check you later, huh? Right. The stakeout in the room continued. Nine fifty-two a.m. We drove over to the coffee shop on West 7th Street to talk to the girl's friend, Peggy Wallace. The cashier told us she was sitting at the end of the counter typing out the day's menus. Well, what about Molly? Something wrong? When was the last time you saw her? Let's see. It was Saturday night. She stayed at my house. Left about noon Sunday. I had the day off. Figured maybe we'd do something. Molly said she had something to do. The last time I saw her was Sunday morning. Do you know a man named Ross Mitchell? I had from. Why do you say that, Miss Wallace? Because he is. Real no good. You pretty friendly with Miss Paul, is he? Molly well, thought so. Turned out he was just using her. What do you mean? Thought at first she could get him some jobs. Turned out he could do better. He dropped her. They were going to get married. And he figured he could do better, so he dropped her. How long has Mitchell known her? Mm, about a year or so. He showed up at an audition. Molly was there. Molly had the part, just had to go through the business to make it look good. She had the part. You know what I mean? I think so. Do you mind if I go ahead with these menus? Boss will get sore if I don't get through with them. No, you go right ahead. We can talk while I'm doing it. I took a course once. Touch typing. Didn't think I'd ever use it. Boy, was I fooled. Yes, ma'am. Well, this Ross really gave her the rush. He had her take him around. Introduced him to her friends, got him a couple jobs. She's the one who introduced him to Mike. Mike? Yeah, Mike Cowell. That's Ross's agent. I set it up. There wasn't anything she hadn't done for him. And the bum acts like this. What do you mean? Treats her so bad. So how do you spell croquettes? I think it's C-R-O-Q-U-E-T-T-E-S. Mm. Turkey. Had roast turkey last night. I don't understand how people can eat them, but we sure sell a lot of them. Did Miss Paul say she was going to see Ross over the weekend? Yeah. Yeah, said she had an appointment to see him Sunday. Said she'd called him and set it up. You know what time? No. She just said that she wasn't going on like they had been. It had to be straightened out. Mm -hmm. I don't blame her. She told all her friends she was going to get married. 
Then at the last minute, Ross had backed out. I'll call the crime lab and see if they finished. Right. How did Mitchell and Miss Paul seem to get along? What do you mean? Well, they have any arguments, disagreements? Not often. About the only trouble they had was about their getting married. <laughs> Ross kept saying it wouldn't do him any good to be married now. Thought it might hurt his career. That's all he ever thought about. Were you ever present at any of these arguments? Once. We'd gone out on a double date. Went to a place down at the beach. Had dinner, and on the way back, we stopped for a few drinks. Mm -hmm. Ross got pretty drunk. Got a big thing about his career. Joe, yeah, see you a minute. Yeah, excuse me, Miss Wallace. Sure. Say, before you go, is there one L or two L's in broccoli? I think it's one. Thanks. I just talked to Lee Jones. Did he finish up? Yeah, something's wrong. What's that? He thinks the girl was murdered. He told us that when they checked for powder burns on the body, they hadn't found any. They measured the reach of the dead girl and found that it would have been almost impossible for her to have pulled the trigger on the rifle, leaving the fingerprints that they had found on the gun. The Walker test failed to show any traces of nitrate powder on her hands or clothing. The handwriting on the suicide note found in the room was checked against samples of Molly Paul's writing. They were not the same. From their findings, the men in the crime lab said that it was their opinion that the girl had not killed herself, that she'd been murdered. We went back to the city hall and called Thelma Keene. She told me that she hadn't heard from Ross Mitchell. Frank prepared a local and an APB on the suspect and it was sent out. 12.30 p.m., we went back to the rooming house and relieved the stakeout. Still no sign of the suspect. 1.30 p.m. Who are you? What are you doing to my phone? Who are you? Police officers, put that bag down. What's going on here anyway? Stand still. What are you guys doing here? You Ross Mitchell? Yeah, why? You know a girl named Molly Paul? What's she got to do with this? You know her? Yeah, I know her. When's the last time you saw her? Say, what's this all about? What's all these questions? When's the last time you saw Molly Paul? Friday night, I guess. Don't you know for sure? All right, Friday night. You haven't seen her since, huh? I told you the last time was Friday night. You didn't see her Sunday? No. Where were you Saturday and Sunday? Out of town. Where? La Cunada. You prove you were there? Why? Can you prove you were there? I don't like all this, you guys coming in here asking a lot of questions. What are you trying to prove? Who are you staying with? A friend of mine. What's his name? I'm not going to have him dragged into this. You haven't got much choice. Well, that's what you say. You haven't told me what this is all about. I'm not telling you anything about who I was with until you tell me a few things. All right, now you look, Mitchell. We're not out here to pass the time of day. You better come up with some straight answers quick. Now, who are you with? A friend of mine, a guy named Sid Austin. What's his phone number? You going to call him? Want to check your alibi. What's Austin's number? It won't do you any good to call him. Thought you said you were there. I was. And we got to call him. He won't be able to tell you anything. He wasn't there. He just let me use his place. Wasn't anybody there. Who's got a key to this place besides you? You mean here? Yeah. Nobody. You got the only key, huh? That's right. The landlady's got one, just two of them. Oh, you got any idea how somebody else could have got in here? No, why? How well do you know Molly Paul? What you got to do with this? How well do you know her? Oh, we used to go together. Anything serious between you? She thought we might get married. How'd you feel about that? Oh, I don't think that's any of your business. Yeah, well, maybe it is, fella. Now, how'd you feel about her? I like her. She's a nice girl. Nothing more. Oh, now look, I think it's about time you told me what this is all about. Something to do with Molly, is that it? Something happened to her? That's right. What? She's dead. How did it happen? Thought maybe you could tell us. Why'd you figure that? Where'd you see her last? Up here. This room? Yeah. When was that? Well, like I told you, Friday night. You ever have any trouble with her? No, sir. Ever argue? No, sir. How did it happen? Can't you tell me? You own a 22 rifle? Yes, I do. You got any bullets for it? Yeah, why? Where do you keep it? The closet over there. You keep it loaded? No, the bullets are on the shelf in the closet. When's the last time you used it? A long time, not since I came out here. You ever been arrested? No. Never been in jail, huh? Never. All right, come on, Ross. We better go downtown. What for? Want to talk to you. Why? You gotta tell me before I have to go. You gotta tell me what you're holding me for. Suspicion of murder. Let's go. Where are you going? Uh, just a moment, please. 
Where are you taking him? Downtown. Why? We want to talk to him. Well, you didn't have anything to do with it, did you, Ross? I don't even know what this is all about. All I know is Molly's dead. And she killed herself in your room. Yeah. She killed herself, Ross. And they're arresting me for murder. Well, you can't do that. He didn't have anything to do with it. It was suicide. Yeah, well, it looks a little different now. No, no, wait a minute. Could I talk to you, please? Please? All right, you want to take him out of the car, Frank? Yeah. Come on. Well, you can see you're making a mistake. Ross didn't have anything to do with it. He's going to have enough trouble with this girl killing herself in his room. You can't arrest him for murder. It was suicide. Doesn't look that way now, ma'am. Things never seem to work out the way you planned, do they? Ma'am. Do you know what this is? Yes, ma'am. 1927, that's when it was. The night our picture opened. Riches and tears. Henry Montaigne, the great director, gave me this basket. He took me to the premiere. It was filled to the brim with yellow roses. Oh, they were lovely. I saved this. Yes, ma'am. Top of the ladder, that's where I was when Henry gave me this. That's where Ross belongs. That's where he could be if he wanted to. I tried to help him. Heaven knows I tried. I, I got him to meet a lot of important people, a lot of contacts. You think he was interested? You bet he was. And how did he show it? He thanks me for all I've done by running around, chasing after that young nobody, that Molly. I tried to reason with her, tried to talk some sense into her. I told her that she couldn't do anything for him. I told her that I could make him a star bigger than anybody. She said she loved him. She doesn't know what love is. All right, go ahead. And she came over here all the time, begging Ross to marry her. I told her to get out of his life and stay out, to leave him alone. He didn't need her. She couldn't do anything for him. When was all this? Sunday evening, she came over, said they were going out on the town. When you're young, you know everything. I'm one of the biggest stars this town ever had. She's a nobody. I know what's good for the boy. You told us that you didn't see the girl Sunday night, isn't that right? That's what I said. Did you see her on Sunday? Yes, I did. She wanted me to let her into Ross's apartment. I told her he wasn't there. She said it didn't make any difference. She said she'd wait for him. Yeah. I told her to leave him alone. She didn't understand him. She didn't know how to take care of him. I knew the right people. He could have written his own ticket in this town. He could have been big. You don't want him. I killed her. All right, you want to get your coat? Yeah, it doesn't make any difference. I did it for him. I thought you'd figure it was suicide. I... Didn't count on you thinking it was anything else. You wrote the note, did you? I did. That's what you've got to understand for him. That's all that counted. He'd marry her and he'd been through. I had to stop it. I didn't want to kill her. Ross is a fine actor, real talent. That doesn't come along very often. Real talent. You'd be willing to give us a statement? Yeah. I want to do the right thing. All right. You ready to go? Just one more thing. Yeah. I didn't show you this photograph, did I? This was taken the night my picture opened. I haven't changed much since then. Not really. I wear my hair a little different, that's all. Yes, ma'am. You've got to promise me when we get downtown, no pictures. I don't want them to take any pictures of me, none. Well, we'll do what we can. Yes. This is the one we'll release to the press. <laughs> October 14th, trial was held in Department 89, Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and convicted of murder in the first degree.